Madam Mayhem, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Sorry, uh, sorry, we got a lot a little long winded. Um, it's all good. But we have you here now. You have a new single out called "I Am More." Yep. Um, but what I really want to dig into to begin with is I want to get the origin story of Madam Mayhem because you've been around for a little bit. Yeah. You kind of give us the history of Madam Mayhem. Okay. Well. The name Madam Mayhem came from my parents, so you can uh, thank them for that. They've been calling me that for a very long time, um, probably even before, you know, all the music came with it. And so it made perfect sense to tie the two together. Uh, but I am from New York, and um, I always knew I wanted to be a singer, and so when I told my parents as a very small child, being from New York, the first thing they do is they throw you in musical theater. So that's where I started, um, opera training, everything. And the whole time I was listening to rock and metal and that's all I wanted to do. So were they like pissed off? They're like, this is bullshit. No, I don't think they were. I think, I mean, I think once they realized how serious I was about it and that there was nothing else I was going to do in my life, I think they accepted it. And they've, they've always <laughs> been pretty supportive. So I, I very much appreciate that. Um, and I feel very fortunate in that way that they were like, okay, we get it. This is your thing. Um, and so, yeah. And then I, you know, started writing at a young age and then just kind of snowballed into this. So it, <sighs> That's what, I guess that's what I was going to ask you. You went through all of your, your theatrical training and right. all of that. So how many instruments do you play? So I sing, I play piano, I play guitar. Um, you know, I, I would love to learn many, many more, <laughs> but for now, you know, that's, I mean, I, I, that's a good, that's a good base to cover. I mean, singing and I think piano. it's okay. And Shit. you know, you know, trained in all different forms of singing, whether it's operatic training or this or that, you know, I, I went to school for it all. You know, my parents were like, you have to go to school, but jokes on them. I went to school for something <laughs> you can't really do anything else with except for, you know, sing. So, yeah. So when did, when did you start? When, when did you have your first, when did you start as Madam Mayhem? Um, I would say it was back maybe 2000 and. 10 about was when was when you know i really you know was able to put my identity together and really start performing as the artist that i've always wanted to be um yeah and i've just kind of and i'm still evolving as as all artists do and it, obviously when you listen to the music from years ago versus now it's it's slightly different as as most artists have you know you want to keep it interesting and always incorporate new elements but you know i i've been doing this for a minute and i think you know i, I think the best way to be you know a live musician is to just play all the time and do this for a long time you know that that's all i've ever wanted to do so i'm thrilled <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to, uh, we're going to show the, uh, the video for your new single. And cool. like Jared says, you can tell us everything or tell us nothing, but tell us a little bit about the song. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I wrote it with Keith Wallen, um, who is an amazing artist. He's also in breaking Benjamin and, um, was on the show. He was on the show. Amazing. Yeah, the show. He's, he's definitely one of my favorite people. And this song really is about self-empowerment. Um, it's it's it comes from a place of strength you know no matter what you're going whatever's going on in your life no matter what the situation there's always i always feel like and i'm sure other people feel that way there's always people trying to put you in a box or always telling you who to be whether it's intentional or they're just trying to help like it just it never works out that way right and so this song is really about understanding that we're all stronger than we know you know no matter what is going on in our lives and you know we can get through whatever it is and we can do whatever we really want to do in the end and so that's that's what the song is about so we're going to roll into the video i will be gone when the video comes back because i unfortunately have to go back to work Aww. but i just want to tell you thank you so much for uh spending some time with us and i hope you have a good christmas and a happy new year and i'm looking forward to seeing more from madam mayhem in 2022 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And thanks for supporting, you know, my music and I hope everyone has a great Christmas and New Year's as well. They will, well, they'll, they will talk to you more when the video is yeah. over with. All right, oh, fine. Don't leave so, then just, so then just you have a Merry Christmas and, <laughs> and then we'll spin it. No, make, make sure you put that into a clip, Jerry, <laughs> so I could have just that part. I can do no. that. I, mean, I, um, I've got a question for you. I grew up uh, near the New York City area. And so growing up in that area is extremely unique if you want to go to school for any kind of music ability, art, art ability. Tell, can you just tell us briefly, I mean, did you go to the, the high school, the high school of art and design then? I didn't. I actually, I went to a public high school and then on the weekends I went to Manhattan School of Music. Uh, they had like a high school university program. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I studied there and then for, and you know, but as I was in school from when I was maybe like 10 or 11, I was doing whether it was regional theater, professional theater, you know, off Broadway, whatever it was, I was, I was working. Um, and then when it came time for, for college, I went to the university of Miami for a school of music to study music and theater and dance and, and everything. And while I was there, I was, you know, taking trips, to Orlando and here and there to just start writing with people and just start working while I was while I was there. Okay. Yeah. I, one of the best parts about growing up in New York and being there is the scene for music. What oh, were yeah. some of your first concert experiences? What were some of your first performances that you had at home? Um, well, I got to do a really cool residency at, at the cutting room um, when I was kind of just starting out. It was a really cool opportunity um, and it really helped me practice, you know, because you're, you're, you're consistently playing, you know, the whole residency vibe. And it was really cool experience. And then, you know, of course, Arlene's Grocery. And, and I actually got to play there again more recently. I think it was back in 2019. And I hadn't played there in years. You know, it was like from when I was starting out. And then I, you know, then all the tours we were on, we really didn't play in the city much. And then we got to come back. And it, it was a really cool, cool experience. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Jared. Were you going to say something? No, no. I'm okay. just like, I'm like, damn, Lisa's killing this shit. Why have we been doing this for two years and you haven't been on the show? That's I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm first of all, I'd fire myself first and then Kevin. So keep going. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I can't yeah, help it. I'm going. from that area. So when I hear this, I love it. I know. I, how, how would we have ever had that kind of in depth? I would have been like, um, what's like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, it would have been, been stupid. You're, you're in, you're juiced in, you know, the well, shit. Well, because living in the city and being near the city, growing up there and being musically talented, there are an insane, everyone knows the movie Fame, right? That yeah, school is I'm, a real place. You know, yeah, there are people, I'm from the people. South. We think everybody in New York and in, in the city are just talented and y'all y'all all go into movies. We don't know. No, and it's extremely competitive. It's <laughs> insanely that competitive. That was kind of a joke. That was kind of a joke. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm just Keep curious. Going, Lisa. I'm going to shut up. Keep going. Go. Do you have any other collaborations coming up? You said you just worked with Keith Wallen, huge yeah. Breaking Benjamin fan, which was just able to see him on tour with them opening with his own work. Amazing. Um, and it, it really is. It's very different from Breaking Ben. I'm just wondering what we're in terms of working with him and other collaborators. What do you look for? Um, really the most important thing is, is being able to be comfortable with the person that you're in the room with. Right. Like even like the, first time I actually ever wrote with Keith and this has happened a few times the same like when I wrote with Corey Larry or whoever whoever it was like we got introduced by someone else you know met for like a second and we were like okay let's write together and then you show up and you're just like hi nice to meet you I, I hope this goes well and then when it does <laughs> it's, people don't it's realize fantastic that it's kind of yeah. it's kind of it's kind of I hate to use the word because if you're not like in the music it's going to be like oh that's a weird word. but it's it's kind of an intimate thing kind of like it's it's very emotional you, you, you spill your guts i mean like there are things that i probably like hadn't told like right you know family right. members that you know you tell your co-writer in the room not right. you don't go oh hey this happened but like you're writing the lyrics and they're like where the hell Correct. did that come from and Correct. you're like Correct. well you know and so and so it's really important that whoever you collaborate with you know that there is a trust there and there is you know a comfort there in a safe space. I think that's the most important thing. I've been in situations, luckily I haven't been in many where I was uncomfortable. So, 
you know, I, I feel very fortunate, but you yeah. know, um, actually Billy Sheehan taught me, you know, that when you're writing with someone, it's cause, cause he's like a li living legend. Right. And so he, um, basically taught me that like you can work with someone and you can put your trust in another person as, and still be your own voice and still be your own, you know, artist without falling into whatever the other writer is wanting, or, you know, you right. want to still have right. it be your sound, right. you know, but of course collaborations are the most fun too, because, you know, you get a little bit of everything from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people that don't, that's never been part of the writing process, they don't understand that. And that's okay. That's like the, the part of the mystique of, of music. Right? right. But like, you don't understand, like if it's real music, you're literally cutting, like cutting your wrist and bleeding onto the song. It's right. It's very, you're very vulnerable when you're in the process of it. And, and then it's funny. Cause then once you write it and you record it and then you go on stage and you do it live. So, right. You're yep. like, you're all hyped about this song. Right. Yep. And then you perform live for the first time, whatever song it is. You're like, Oh, everyone's about to know like my deepest, darkest secret, or everyone's going to know like my greatest fear because I didn't think this through. <laughs> and now everyone's going to hear it, but it ends up like really working out because I mean, why do we do this? Right. You, you, I mean, I obviously, I have the passion for, for music and singing and, and it's like, the only thing I've ever wanted to do, but it's really that connection with fellow rock or fellow music lovers to, to have that family. That we call them junkies on the show. I we're love it. We're oh, nice. Junkies. Okay. Yeah, well, so your yeah. fellow music junkies, it's, it's, yep. it's important. Like, you know, so much music has affected me so many songs, so many artists. And then if I'm at all able to, to do that with anyone else, even if it's like minuscule, like I, I've done my job, you know, do you find yourself like when you write your lyrics do, in, in like what you just said, like to elaborate on that, do you purposefully edit or subconsciously edit or do you and, 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 like, like follow me here? Like, mm -hmm. do you want not, not for personal reasons, may, maybe you're comfortable personally telling everybody everything, even after the song, but do you edit it because you want to keep it secret to yourself or do you edit it? Because, because here's my thing. Like, when if an artist because i used to get pissed off like a tool they would always keep all their shit like super you know we're not telling you what it's about and you're like i kind of want to know but as i got older i was like if they tell you what it's about then it's only about this and it's in Correct. this box but if they don't tell you what it's about it can be whatever you want it to be which is more healing and more appealing to you as the listener and some people go you don't know anything. Some people go, you know, everything. And then somebody will play in the middle. Like, what do you think you are? I think it depends on the song. I think it's very important. Like whatever I write about, I try, you know, not to restrict myself too much, but at the same time, like whatever I was thinking or whatever I was feeling while I was writing that song can apply to someone else in a totally different way, you know, and can be like, have a totally different meaning from a totally different situation. Correct. And that's the best way to do it. You know, Thank like you. I, that, that's, I have, how, that's what yeah. I think. I think that's the best way to write it. Even if you want to be like, I'm going to write about this specific thing, this girl, this guy, this one thing. I think if you do that, that's cool. Cause music is, is cathartic. But if you get, if you give the listener the ability to like transcribe their life onto it, like it's that much better. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, a lot of people just think I'm really angry at specific like dudes once in a while, like as I'm saying, <laughs> but a lot of it is really just frustration, whether it's with the industry, whether it's, you know, and like, so sometimes we deserve it. it we deserve it. it. We deserve it. We deserve yeah, but, it. But it's like, oh, is that about a guy or a breakup? It's like, actually, it wasn't. But hey, you know, if, if for you, that's what it's about, then go for it. Right. You know, right. So, and I think yeah. sometimes as a, as a uh, artist, you, you, you know, it's natural to write in like me versus them, whether you're like, if it's a woman, maybe me versus him. Cause that's what, you know, but people interpret it like that, but they don't because realize that. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. They don't realize that you're, you might be talking about like a global thing, like, exactly. a, like music industry, right. Us versus me, them versus me. But that's cool. That's what I think is cool about it. If you're going through a breakup and it's a breakup song for you. Cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's a growth song for you. Cool. You know, if it's whatever that works. hundred percent. So what do you have coming up for 2022? Where are people going to be able to catch you next year? 
Yes, well, uh, I will be on Shiprocked um, in January as one of the stowaways. I'm very excited. It's going to be my third year. I'm really pumped. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and, you know, hopefully from there, get get the band together and get back on the road. I mean, we, ha we haven't played. I mean, we've played live in this room, but we haven't like played live in a really long time because of, you know, the Come. world yeah. and um, where's the ship where is the ship rock going i think it's leaving from texas and it's going to mexico you could check it out shiprock.com check it all out i think there's a few cabins left um but the stowaways is always the most fun there because it's literally like a bunch of different people from a bunch of different bands and we get all together and just play you know whatever covers or whatever the theme is so it's really and you also get to see obviously other bands that are playing their original music but it's, it's a really fun thing you know to be able to it's again with the collaboration to play with other members from other bands that you normally wouldn't ever have the do opportunity they do, to hang do, out do with. Do the whole trip or do they like helicopter you in? No, you're you're on the boat the whole time. So it's really fun. <laughs> it's fun. And then, you know, it's I not like a diehard movie. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like they just kind of like like drop me in as yeah. long as starting yeah. and then yeah. I just kind yeah. of yeah mm -hmm. yes. and then when well, you're done they like shoot confetti out the side of the boat and then you just like blast i hope off. someone from the production team is is listening to this so maybe we can make <laughs> good work call, call us up and we'll figure this shit out oh Sh Ship Rocked, okay does depart galveston texas stopping yes. in first of maya and cozumel through the 27th uh it is headlining with lamb of god and i prevail you've got and there's a lot of artists a lot a lot of smaller artists as well that we see all the time and we have here on the show as well like i know that um varsity is going to be there um let's see who else they said they've got seven dust on their spirit box they've got oh yeah look at you madam <laughs> This is great. This it's is so, so cool. Fun. And it's so fun. And it's it's just really, I love to do it. And um, so then from there, hopefully the band, you know, we can get back on the road, whether, you know, we're doing, you know, we haven't been able to announce anything yet, but the goal is to get back out there in 2022. We're going to have new music, hopefully very soon as well. And so, you know, a lot of, a lot of cool things coming 2022. So everyone just needs to keep in touch okay awesome well thank you for your time tonight thank you for coming you. on and sharing what's going on with you and we look forward to hearing what's coming next yes. year hopefully you'll be able to come back and share with us at that time i would love that that would be awesome. Yes. Hey, where, where, where do where are you most active this is we always ask the artists this where, like where if, like on if, socials if, yeah, so like I run, yeah. I run all of the social media for Madam Mayhem. So if you write something and someone writes back, it's ninety nine percent going to be me unless they say it's not me. Okay, like, but what, so, where, if, yeah. if, if I'm the fan, Facebook, I want to talk to you directly. Where, where which one? Which one? Which it's, one? Oh, I'm on all of it. No, I'm literally consistently so, so you, Facebook, so you're, you're, Instagram, Twitter. You're um, juiced into yeah. every single one of them. You're juiced into all of those. Unfortunately, I'll tell you. No, sometimes it's, not, it's really no. Sometimes it's exhausting because how who can stare at the I I just want to make the music, thing. man. Here's the thing, and we but I love connecting with people. So we touched on this on message, the last. We touched on this on the last interview. Yeah. Everybody, I know I, I'm I'm the old man. I'm like, eh, I'm saying, people think that you just get signed and it's over with and you make all this money. It's like you don't understand. You have to touch your social channels, right? And it's yeah. got to be all of them. And you have to be. It's it's a lot of work, is it not? It's a lot of work, but it's um, what you love. I I love connecting with other people that also love music. So Correct. you know, Correct. if someone reaches out, I try my best to answer because I genuinely genuinely want to talk to them. Um, That's right. Because they're my kind of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, you know. That's, that's different than like Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses in the 80s. You couldn't like direct message them. But now they can direct message you and talk to you. And you can interact with your fans on that level. Right. Which is really, which is really cool. And it is. Matt has dropped the links to everything Madam Mayhem in the okay. comments. So please go and take a look there. Um, and thank you so much. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. you too. And all thank right. you guys for all the support and have great holidays. Thank you. We'll see you back next year. All right. Okay. Thank Later. you.